Good morning, everybody. It's so great to see you. I'm so glad you came to join us for another Sunday School session with the Gospel Project and Calvary Chapel, Gloucester County. Hi, I'm Pastor Steve. A lot of you already know me, but maybe some of you don't. But I just want to welcome you and ask you to just come in, come on and join us on the small screen while we go over our lessons today. We have a lot of really cool stuff going on today. I'm excited about it. Are you getting excited about it? Maybe you're not so excited about because you don't know what's going on yet. But this week, this week is our even more guest week. If you remember, we've been inviting guests to come in and say hello, stopping in and giving us little bits of uh, information, a little bit of hello, some of our lesson stuff. And this week is no different. I've invited even more guests to stop in and say hello I am excited about the ones that are in today. I hope you are too. Do you know who they are? Of course you don't know who they are because they're special guests. They're surprises. So I really want to get on with today's show. But we have to remember when we're starting, what is the first thing that we start off with every single week? You're right. We start off with prayer. So I want to ask you, if you're sitting there, hopefully you're comfortable like me. Again, I'm wearing my Superman, comfortable Superman shirt. But when we're praying, I want to make sure that you close your eyes and that you fold your hands. And the reason we do that, and I've explained it before, is so that you're not looking around or distracted or playing with something, but that you're really concentrating on our prayer for today. So how about you join me as we pray? Dear God, I just want to thank you for loving us so much, God. And we are looking forward to today's lesson, the things that we will learn. And God, I am also thankful and I ask you to bless our special guests that are coming in this week. God, be with each one that is watching this video. And we just pray for the day when we can all be back together. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, wait, what do you guys say? Come on, join me. You say what? Amen. All right, guys. So you also know that the next thing that we like to do are our three pledges. Do you know what the three pledges are? We have one for the American flag. The second one we do is the Christian flag. And then the third one we like to do is the Bible. And what we do is for the Christian flag, again, we want to show our commitment to our country and how much we love our country. And we're asking God to bless our country. The second one we do is for the Christian flag, which is where we are making a commitment to God to serve him and to love him and to thank him for all the different things that we believe that he has done for our life. The third one we do is the Bible. Why do we do the Bible? Because we want to pledge and make a commitment to study and read the Bible because we know that God gave us the Bible for us to learn more about him and for how to live our lives each and every day. So we're going to do the three pledges now. You want to join me? Here we go. We're going to start off with our American flag. That's the first flag that we're going to do. And just a reminder, we have a couple things that we do when we're doing our pledges. We do what? We make sure that we stand up. We make sure that we put our right hand on our heart. And then we do the pledge right after that. Are you guys ready? Are you ready to stand up with Pastor Steve? Are you ready to take your right hand and put it on your heart? Let's do our first pledge. Ready? I'm going to go stand up now. Here I go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we're now going to do our Christian flag. Are you still standing? Do you still have your right hand on your heart? Here we go. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty for all who believe. All right, are you ready for the Bible pledge? I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 
and will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. All right, I'm going to sit back down. <laughs> there we go. I got <laughs> Boy, it's a long way down from up there. Now, nah. so I want to go over now what are what? What do we cover now? Our announcements. So what's coming up for us? What are different things that we can be involved in? Well, the first thing I want you to know about is that Calvary Kids, we are going live. We have our own Facebook page at this point. Do you know that? Our own Facebook page where you can see all the different things that our family ministry does. You can come and join us. All you have to do is have your parents log in to Family Ministries at Calvary Chapel, Gloucester County. I know that's a long mouthful, but if you just simply have your parents type in the at sign, family, CCGC, it should take them right to it. So that's the easier way to do that. Our next announcement is that every single Monday night at 7 o'clock, I have something really special I do. I go live on Facebook and we do bedtime devotions with, oh, me, Pastor Steve. And we do that from 7 to 7.30. And what we're going to be doing now is every Monday night, we're going to do a quick review of our lesson that you're going to be viewing right now. So we're going to discuss it a little bit more, go over it, and see if you guys have anything to say, anything that you would like to share about the lesson that we're learning. So that's every Monday night from 7 to 7.30. Yep, right here live on our Facebook channel. Very good. The next thing I want to remind you of, and so many of you know about this, is our weekly game nights. Every Friday from 7 o'clock until who knows what time it's over, from 7 o'clock we start off with playing games with kids, and we do a lot of live Facebook fun, fun games. Last night we did a Can You Find Six? It was kind of difficult, even for me at times. And then at 8 o'clock, we bring the grown-ups in, and they play a couple games themselves. So it's a great, fun, family game night. So invite your friends, invite their families to join you on Facebook Live to play games along with me on our brand new uh, family at Calvary Chapel, Gloucester County Facebook page. Can you do that? Can you remember? I know so many of you were playing last night. It was great to play with you guys. Another thing I want to remind you guys of is our cardboard box car challenge. Are you guys working on your cars? Are you doing that? Have you gotten a gigantic box out and made it into a cardboard box that you could climb into? Or maybe you took a shoe box and just made a car out of a shoe box. Or maybe you just grabbed some paper and decided you are going to draw a picture of a car instead. I hope that you're doing that. Make sure that you send them in to me. Send the pictures to me here. You can drop them off on our Facebook page. And I would love to see what your family has come up to. And that's the most important thing is to make sure that it is a family thing that you're doing. That your mom and dad or whoever is at your house is helping you design these cars. Something to do as a family. The next announcement, the last announcement is one, just a quick reminder that if you don't have the Lifeway Gospel Project app, you're going to want to get it. That's how you can easily follow along with the different lessons that we have each and every week. You can go to the uh, Lifeway app and open it up and you'll find Gospel Project and you can download our lessons. Those lessons include the lesson videos. They include the songs. There's some game pages. There. It is so jam-packed full of stuff that you're going to want to definitely get it. Make sure you ask your mom and dad to look for it. They can find it in the app store for their phones or their tablets and look for the Lifeway app, and they will have all the Gospel Project information right there. All right, it's time for our missionary moment. And we know who our missionaries are. We know that it is Alejandro and Lauren Tipaz. They are all the way in Guatemala. And we love the fact that they are our missionaries. Every now and then, they will stop in on some of our live Facebook things. And so, yes, 
all the way from Guatemala, they will do that. They will come all the way up from Guatemala and join us. No, they don't come all the way up here. They join us live on Facebook. And that's exciting to see, but we love to hear about what they do. Matter of fact, for the past few weeks, we've been showing some of the pictures of the things that they do. You remember those pictures, right? Where we see them helping people out. We see them giving them food. We see them uh, building things, some craft stuff going on. Just being able to share the love that God has for them to the people in Guatemala. What an exciting time. Are you? sharing the love of God with the people around you. In special ways, are there things that you're doing that you're showing the love of God to other people around you? The examples we see with the tea pauses, again, we're seeing them helping the people that they live near. So they encourage us to do the same. So maybe this week, if you're seeing somebody, maybe they're a little sad from what's going on in the world, you can give them the encouragement and the love of Jesus Christ, just like Alejandro and Lauren do in Guatemala. It is time for our memory verse. And guess what, guys? We've got a new memory verse, a new one. You remember the one that we've learned the past couple weeks it was Romans 10, 9, about confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. And that is how we know we can be saved. Well, we have a new verse this week. It's John 3, 30. Now you remember, you've heard of the chapter John 3. Typically, you remember the verse John 3, 16, where it says, God so loved the world. You remember that. But down further in the chapter is another verse in John 3, verse 30. And that says, he must increase, but I must decrease. Can you say that with me? He, let's do it this way with our hands. He must increase, I must decrease. Now, what does that mean? How can I explain that to you? It's pretty simple. A lot of times, we only think about ourselves. And we become the most important person in our life. And that's not how it should be. The most important person in our life should be God. And so it's important for us to remember that God must be more important and us less important. That's what it means by he must increase. God must increase his importance in your life. And me, I need to decrease. I need to not be as important as I think I am. Everything can't revolve or move around me. I can't be the person that gets all the attention. The attention we want to make sure goes to God. So, can you say this with me? It's pretty simple this time. We can use your hands. Ready? He must increase, but I must decrease. Let's try that again. Ready? He must increase, but I must decrease. Oh, let's bring them back together. And I want to say, I will leave out some words and you have to answer them for me, okay? He must, but I must. Let's try that again. He must, but I must. Did you get it? John 3, 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. That's our new verse. Are you going to be able to remember that one? It's a pretty easy one this time. All right, it's time for our Bible story. Are you guys ready for our Bible story? This one is a really interesting one. It's all about Jesus being alone in the desert. I wonder what's going to happen. I know in the past, the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about Easter and we know that Jesus was brought into Jerusalem. He was brought into Jerusalem and everybody thought he was going to be king. And then we know later on that they realize, oh, he's not the kind of king we thought he was going to be. So let's kill him because he's claiming to be God. 
and we know that Jesus is God. So what happened was they decided to hang him on a cross and have him die. But as our verse says, we know, we know, we believe and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, that even though he died, that God raised him from the dead. And we know also that he was, he had appeared to over 500 people to show that he was alive. Now for the, for what we're doing now is we're going to be doing some stories from before Jesus came into Jerusalem. We're going to go all the way back to just as Jesus was starting his ministry. Remember, we covered the lesson about John baptizing Jesus. These are some of the things that have happened after that baptism. So we're going to go do some flashback stories for the next few weeks, and we're going to hear more about what Jesus has done. This one, he's in the desert. Are you ready? After Jesus was baptized, God's Spirit led him into the wilderness. Jesus stayed in the wilderness for many days. He prayed to God and thought about God's plan for his life. Jesus did not eat anything while he was in the wilderness, and he was very hungry. The devil came to tempt Jesus. He tried to get Jesus to do wrong things. The devil said, if you are really God's son, tell these stones to become bread. If Jesus used his power to turn the stones into bread, he could eat the bread. Then he wouldn't be hungry anymore. But Jesus said no. He trusted God to give him what he needed. Then Jesus said, this is what the Bible says. Man must not live only on bread, but on all the words God says. Jesus did not sin, so the devil tried again. He took Jesus to the top of the temple in Jerusalem. The devil said, if you are really God's son, prove it. Jump off the top of the temple. God will protect you. Then the devil said, the Bible says God will order his angels to keep you safe and they will protect you so that you will not even trip on a stone. Again, Jesus said no. Jesus knew the devil was trying to trick him by misusing God's words. The devil was being foolish. Jesus said, the Bible also says, do not test God. Finally, the devil took Jesus to a high mountain where they could see land stretched out far and wide. The kingdoms and the land were great. The devil said, look, I will give you all the money and power of these great kingdoms. All you have to do is fall down and worship me. Jesus said, no, go away. He said, the Bible says, only worship God and only serve God. So the devil went away. Angels came to help Jesus and serve him. In all of these things, Jesus never sinned. The devil tried to get Jesus to sin, but Jesus never sinned. Jesus always did the right thing. Jesus died on the cross to rescue us from sin. When we are tempted to sin, we can ask Jesus to help us say no to sin. So did you understand what just happened? That Satan was out in that very same desert trying to tempt Jesus to do things against God. He was trying to get Jesus to obey Satan. And Jesus knew better. Jesus knows that the only one he needs to obey is his heavenly Father, which is God. And so our point that we want to make today is Jesus was tempted, but he never sinned. Do you believe that? That Jesus was tempted by Satan. I can't believe Satan thinks he could have tried to do that. But he did. So Satan tried to tempt Jesus, but Jesus was tempted, but he never sinned. 
He never did anything that Satan wanted him to do. He continued to love God. He even shared scripture with Satan. And he continued to be sinless as Jesus was. So remember, Jesus was tempted, but he never sinned. Why did Jesus become human? We've been covering this for the past few, probably about a month now. Do you remember? Do you understand that Jesus became human to obey his father's plan and to rescue sinners? We know all that. We heard a lot about that, that rescue, while we were talking about Easter. That God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. And that was going to be our rescue from our sins. So why did Jesus become human? Jesus became human to obey his Father's plan and rescue sinners. Are you one of the sinners that Jesus rescued? I know I am. So it's time for our first special guest. Now, our first special guest is a good friend of mine. She goes to a church that is not too far from where I live. And she is in charge of their kids' ministry. Her name is Miss Kathy, and she's going to tell you a lot about what she does for her church, but also she's got some great ideas for you to do for while you're at home. Listen to Miss Kathy. I love what she has to share. Hi, kids. My name is Miss Kathy, and I live in Audubon, New Jersey, which is about 15 minutes from where you are. Um, I go to Milestone Church and I am the director of the children's ministry there, which meets on Wednesday nights and uh, the name of the group is Pier 252. I have here my puppy Sunshine and I have my Sunshine shirt Um, and what I've been doing is I've been making videos each week for our kids and I've been naming it Sunshine Sunday. Um, And usually it's sunny out today, it's a little cloudy but that's okay because it's still a sunny, beautiful sunny day. Um, So I just wanted to send a quick note to encourage you all um, during this time. I know it's difficult being home. Um, You're not able to go to school. Uh, Maybe that's okay with you, but um, but then, you know, you're not able to go to church and see your friends. Uh, Some of you might play sports and dance, and uh, and I know it's difficult, but you, you can't do the things that you normally would like to do. But I hope that you're taking advantage of this time, being home with your family. Um, that's precious time together. We don't get to spend a lot of time. Normally we're out running around doing a million things. Um, so I hope that you are enjoying the time with your family and maybe trying to find some fun things to do with them. I know I've seen kids uh, doing some chalk drawings out on the sidewalk. Maybe you can do that or do some crafts, maybe make um, sing some songs. Um, there are color, there, there's so many things, maybe puzzles. There's a lot of things you can do when you're at home. Um, so I hope that you're uh, finding some uh, fun quality time with your family to do those things. And of course, most importantly is to read the Bible. Um, we have more time now. A lot of times we don't make time for things, but now we have time to do that kind of stuff. Um, so I just want to encourage you to um, just to also make sure you pray every day. Uh, reading the Bible and praying is what helps get us through. Um, we, uh, I know this past week, Pastor uh, Steve had the game night, and, um, and I joined in on that, and that was so much fun. So I know for your church that you are all trying to keep uh, connected to each other by doing things like that. But then also um, to, when, you're, when you're alone and maybe in bed or, or just playing or whatever, um, that try to remember to pray too. Um, Jesus loves you so much, and um, God is watching over all of us. Uh, we're praying um, for God to keep us safe. And, um, and that's something that you want to pray every day. All right. Thank you, Miss Kathy. Are you guys ready for a minute to win it? We have been playing some crazy fun games, even on the small screen. And this week, it's no different. This week, we are going to play Can You Find Six? Can You Find Six? I love these games. You guys are getting to be so good at these. For those of you who play on Saturday night, you guys are getting to be amazing at these games and so miss steph and i are going to be in the next picture hopefully you can find it it is can you find six tacos the game begins in three two one
right, it is time for our next special guest. Are you ready? Are you excited? Do you guys like science? Do you want to know is how God is involved in science? Would you say, oh, I don't know. You have the Bible. When we study the Bible, we learn about God in the Bible. And then we learn about science at school. Well, what if I told you that God was in charge of science? Our next guest is all the way from Wisconsin. So I want to have you pay close attention to my good friend, Jay Seegert. Hey kids, Jay Seegert here with the Starting Point Project. Here to give you an encouraging message. Did you know that the Bible tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made? That's Psalm 139 verse 14. Yes, you are an amazing creation. In fact, you have about 50 trillion cells in your body right now. And each one of those cells is actually more complex than the space shuttle. That's true. Inside each of these cells in the middle is something we call DNA. It's that little twisted ladder. It's got all the information to develop your body and help you be alive right now. In fact, if you had just a small amount of DNA, just a pinhead amount of DNA, and then could write that out, you look at it and you're reading it and you write it into book form, it would fill enough books to stack not from here to here, but from the earth all the way up to the moon 500 times. And that's just a pinhead amount of your DNA written out. There's a lot of information here that God has given you. You are truly fearfully and wonderfully made. So what's the deal with this whole coronavirus thing then? Did God create viruses? Yes, he did. And it's a good thing because viruses actually do good things. But because of Adam's sin, that brought death and a curse into our world. And it also affected some viruses. So some of them have become bad and it can make us sick. But we don't have to be afraid of that because God had a plan for that too. We just celebrated Easter not too long ago. Jesus Christ came to die on a cross to pay for the sins of the world so that he could fix everything. So when we place our trust in Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. And eventually God's going to create a new heavens and a new earth and there won't be any more bad viruses or sickness or death anymore. So that should be very encouraging. So trust God through these whole very trying times. Be obedient. Be respectful to your parents and God will honor that and continually trust God and his word. I hope that's encouraging to you. I hope to see you sometime soon. Wow. Thank you, Jay. That was that video was amazing and I love the information that you shared in that video. Thank you so much. That gives me a lot more peace about what God is doing in this world. Not just what's going on now, but also that he sent his son Jesus to die for me and I have a great comfort in knowing that God loves me. Thank you so much for that video. It's time for our discussion question. Are you guys ready to hear what Pastor Brian wants to share with us today? Wonder who wrote him a letter this time. Let's see what Pastor Brian has to say. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Ashley from Burlington, Wisconsin asks, How do I know if I'm being tempted? You know, Ashley, before I answer your question, let me just talk about what temptation is, just so we can make sure we all are on the same page with that. In today's Bible story, we see that Jesus was tempted, but we know that Jesus never sinned, so that proves to us that there's nothing wrong with being tempted. It's not a sin to be tempted. Let's be clear about that. The sin occurs when we give in to temptation. Notice that's what Jesus did not do. Satan tempted him, but Jesus did not go into that temptation and follow through. He said no, and he didn't act on that temptation. So for us, what we wanna do is recognize when we're tempted, like you're asking about today, and then figure out how we can resist temptation. So how do we know we're being tempted? Well, there are a couple things. 
One, we recognize that something within us is desiring us to go away from God's Word instead of going toward Him and obey His Word. There's something within us, either because of an external, the world around us, or just the selfishness of our hearts, um, our own desires, that we want to either do what we know the Word of God says we do not do, or we don't want to do what the Word of God says we should do. Either of those are temptations to disobey God, to not obey Him fully. And so we just want to be careful that we recognize when we're having these thoughts, when, when our hearts are moving in us in those directions, and we recognize those are not of God, those are of the world, those are of sin. And so we want to fight against that. So how can you fight against temptation? Well, there are a couple things you can do. The first thing you can do is remember the Word of God. Again, this is how we test everything. And so if you desire to do something that's not in the Word of God that goes against it, you know it's wrong. And so you can fight against that. You can share with other believers. Have somebody hold you accountable. Go to them and say, hey, something within me, I just want to disobey God. I want something that's not in line with His Word. Will you, will you pray with me? And that's the third thing you do. You, you can pray to God. Ask God to help you. Ask God to reveal that what you desire is not the best for you. Ask Him to help change your heart so that you want only what He wants, only what is best for you truly because it's what is His will. So I got a question back for you. What are some strategies you use to fight temptation? Thank you, Pastor Brian. Which, what are we going to do to discuss that question? I don't know what to do. I wasn't prepared. Oh, no. We decided to do something different this week. And guess who is taking over our discussion question? We're going to have our Calvary Kids guest, Miss Steph, come and join us and do the discussion question. Of course, she is also going to share how much she misses you and loves you guys. So, enjoy our time with Miss Steph. Hi guys, Miss Steph here. How are you guys all doing out there in Facebook land? Huh? Oh. I miss you so much. It's week four of being at home. How was Easter? Did you have a great Easter? Here at the Chambers house, it was five of us. And we had ham and potatoes and green beans. And we all had church together in our living room. We listened to Pastor Gary and we sang songs. We played games and watched a movie. We took walks. It's good to be together. But I really miss all of you. I miss all the kids there. I miss the workers, the volunteers. And I am praying, are you praying? I am praying that we are back in Calvary Kids so soon. I'm so glad that God is in control and that he has this and he knows that we're going to be at church really, really soon. Well, today I'm here to talk about the question of the day, which is what strategies do you use to fight temptation? When you are tempted, what do you say or do to help you with that temptation? Well, I'm going to tell you a few things that I do, and maybe that is going to help you fight temptation. First thing I do, if I want something, so say it's four o'clock in the afternoon and it's not dinner time, of course, but I'm getting hungry and I go look over and there's these big, giant chocolate chip, gooey, yummy, warm cookies, and I want them. Well, it's not good that I eat them because then I won't eat dinner. So what I will do is I will physically leave a room. I'll physically leave that space. So I'll shut the kitchen lights off and I'll go upstairs and I'll fold some laundry or I'll go outside and I'll take a walk. I'll do something totally different. So if you are tempted by something and you are able to leave that space and that will help you fight that temptation, then walk away. That's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do is you can pray. If you have Jesus in your heart, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And you can ask the Holy Spirit to help you fight that temptation. You can pray and you can say, please, I need help. I'm feeling weak. And the Holy Spirit will help you. Another thing you can do with prayer is you can ask somebody to pray with you or to pray for you. Tell them that you're struggling with something and they can pray for you or they can pray with you. Another thing you can do is you can quote scripture. So the Bible says that 
If you quote scripture, it's going to help you fight that temptation. So go into the Bible and look up the word temptation, and you're going to find some scripture that you can read from. One is 1 Corinthians 10, 13, and it says this, No temptation has take, overtaken you, but that which is common to man. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you are able, but he's going to find a way that you can endure it. So quote scripture. Use God's word to fight the enemy and to fight that temptation. Well, that's what I have for today. I'd love to hear how you fight temptation. And I hope that you'll comment below. You'll post something to say hi. I really do miss you all. And I cannot wait to see you. I hope that you're doing well. I am praying for Calvary Kids. And I'm praying that we're back soon. I hope you have a great week. And I will see you guys next week. I'll see you later, guys. Bye. All right. Thank you, Miss Steph. That was so good. Now you're making me hungry. I, I kind of want to get a uh, cookie, but I need to ask if it's okay because it's close to lunchtime and I don't want to have a cookie if I'm not supposed to have a cookie. So, but thank you for that great example. Yes, when we get tempted, we can always go to God. We can pray for help. We can read scripture, like the verse that Miss Steph shared. And I know that God wants to help us to obey him in everything that we do. You know what? Just like Jesus was tempted, we get to be tempted. Now, Jesus never sinned. And unfortunately, I know sometimes we all, when we're tempted, we do something that's wrong. It would be great for us to obey, but sometimes we disobey and we do what's wrong. But the nice thing, the good thing about that, the good news about that, the good news is that we have salvation. And the good news is also what we call what? The gospel. And so I want to share a little bit of the good news with you. We've shared this before, but do you know that the gospel is also God's plan for us? Yeah, the good news that we find in the Bible is God's good news for us. The most important, great, good news ever is that Jesus came for our sins and that God loved us so much that he sent his son, Jesus. So I want to go over a couple things with you. Who runs your life? Who's in charge of your life? I'm not talking about your parents and your teachers. I know that they have to kind of instruct you and guide you in things. But when it comes down to it, when you're looking at that cookie that you'd like to eat, who is in charge of making that decision? You are. So who's in charge? If you have Jesus in your heart and the Holy Spirit is moving in your life, God can keep you from those temptations. So, we know this because, well, let's face it. God created the earth. He created everything. So, if he's if he created everything, then guess what? He's in charge of everything too. But we know that we've all sinned. We have all sinned. Have you ever done something wrong? Yeah, me too. We've all done something wrong. But we have to realize that we did. And when we realize that we did something wrong, we have to realize that that is disobeying God. So if you've sinned, if you've done, if you've done something wrong, then yes, you've disobeyed God. And our sin, as I've shown before, separates us from God. I know Miss Steph shared that uh, about that separation a couple weeks ago. Yes. In the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve were around, they walked together with God. But as soon as sin came into the world, it separated man from God. And there was that separation. And the only thing that could join us back together was that our sins needed to be forgiven because God can't look on sin. See, God is holy and he must punish sin. You do something wrong, you need to get punished. 
And so what happened was God sent his son Jesus to take that punishment that we deserved. All the wrong things that we have done, Jesus took upon himself. Well, God sent him. We know that. We know those stories. We've learned about Christmas and we know about Easter. So we know that God sent his son Jesus to forgive us of the wrong things that we've done, the sin, the disobeying, and the temptations. God sent his son Jesus to clear that way so that we could be reunited with God. So what is the best gift you've ever gotten? Can you tell me? Again, I know I've mentioned it before, but has it been a Christmas gift? Maybe a birthday gift? Or maybe somebody just gave you a gift just because? Wow. But what if you didn't deserve a gift? What if you were so, if you did things so wrong? Wait a second. If you did things that were so wrong, that would be sin or disobeying. Hmm. You know what? Jesus took our punishment for those sins by giving his life. He gives us his righteousness. The very righteousness that says to you that while Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, he never sinned. Jesus is wholly righteous. How can we be wholly righteous? By having Jesus take on our sins when he died on the cross. And when we believe in that, God, it says in the Bible that God counts it as righteousness. And we see that God, when God looks at us, he sees us as righteous. So Jesus did that for us. God sees us as if we lived the perfect life that Jesus lived. Isn't that kind of really important, right? That is the best gift. Salvation is the best gift. That is also the good news, the gospel, as we're sharing it. So how do you respond to this? How do you respond when I share these things? If you know that you're a sinner, if you know that you've been tempted to do things, if you know that you've disobeyed, but you also know that Jesus can take away those sins by you believing on him, dying on the cross. How do you respond to that? Well, you have a choice to make. Will you trust Jesus as your, as your Savior and Lord? Will you trust him? Do you know that Jesus died on the cross to save you? Do you know that Jesus died on the cross and wants him to be in control of your life so that you don't do those wrong things? If you have Jesus constantly working in your life, those temptations will start to go away. The very wrong things that are facing you will go away when you live and act like Jesus wants you to live and act. So, do you want to turn your life over to Jesus? Do you want him to be in control? Again, we remember our verse from last time where it was Romans 10, 9, where it's talking about if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we'll be saved? Do you believe that? Or, as our verse today, John 3.30 says, God must, he must increase, and I must decrease. Yep. We need God to be more important in our life. We need the God in us the Holy Spirit, Jesus, to move in our life, to be the most important thing. We need God to increase, but we need to decrease. And that, you might think, boy, oh boy, well, we have to make God more important. Yeah, do you know that if you make God more important, your life will be a whole lot smoother because God is in control. And we know that God, when God is in control of your life, your life goes so much smoother. So I'm going to say a prayer now, and I want you to pay close attention to it. And at one point, if you want, you can repeat the words that I'm sharing. All right, let's pray. 
Dear God, thank you for this lesson. And God, I just want to thank you that when your son Jesus was on this earth and when he was out in the wilderness tempted by Satan, that he did not sin. Even though he was tempted, he did not ever, ever sin. But God, we know that you sent Jesus to obey you, even to obey you to die on the cross because you sent him to do that. You sent him to die on the cross for our sins. But we know, God, that you raised him from the dead. And so that we can have that assurance that we can be forgiven from our sins, from our disobeying, and from our temptations. So God, I just want to thank you for sending your son, Jesus. And God, for those who are watching, who are saying, I'm not sure if I am a Christian, I want you to just repeat this prayer after me, and we can talk about it at another time. Dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I have disobeyed. I admit that when I'm tempted, sometimes I do the wrong thing. But I know, God, that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross, to take my sins upon him, so that when you look at me, God, you look at me as you would look at Jesus, righteous. So God, I admit that I have done those things that are wrong. I believe, yep, and say it, God, I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead for my sins, and today I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, and God, I also confess with my mouth that I believe that you raised him from the dead. And God, I believe in those things in my heart so much that I know right now I am a child of yours. Or some people like to say, I am saved or I am a Christian. Thank you, God, for loving me so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, did you pray that prayer? Let me know if you prayed that prayer or if you have questions about that. You let me know because I want you to have Jesus as the Lord in your life. It would be the most exciting decision you ever made. And we know it's a decision you have to make to let God know that you believe that Jesus died for your sins. So guys, I just want to thank you for this week. Man, it was another jam-packed week full of stuff. And I am looking forward to next week. I'm not even sure who our guests will be next week or if we'll have guests. But I love coming here with you guys. I love joining you and just having a great time. I hope you learned a lot today. I do want to thank my guests who popped in today. I want to thank Miss Kathy Mr. J and Miss Steph for all popping in and saying hello to us and for all the things that they shared. I know that they miss and love you, and I know that they love God with all their heart. So guys, until next week, have a great one. Keep in touch. Send some comments to me. Post some pictures. Uh, send me some videos, whatever you'd like to do. And guys, I'm just going to say something, just a reminder. If you, yeah, if you would like to be one of our special guests on the video, shoot me a video, send it to me. Let me know what you are doing. Let me know what your lessons are. Make sure you let your mom and dad know. Say, hey, mom and dad, Pastor Steve wants me to be in the video next week. And then send me a video, okay? I would love to post some of our video our videos of our kids. All right, guys, have a good week. I'm out of here. Got to head on out. I got to go find out who my guests are for next week. See you guys later. Take care. God bless.